Go to BigManComics.com for the best in action, adventure, entertainment. Hey guys, Gabe Beltane here for BigManComics.com with another expert opinion. You're welcome. Why am I an expert? Uh, I've spent the last 25 or so years being an award-winning writer, illustrator, colorist for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image. Uh, if you've heard of it, I have worked on it. Star Wars, Batman, Justice League, Arkham City, Wonder Woman, Superman, Green Lantern, uh, uh, World of Warcraft. If you've heard of it, Borderlands, I've worked on it. And I love it, and I'm grateful that I got to do it for so long. I'm independent now with Big Man Comics, but I am here to give you my expert opinion on ugly woke art. Guys, if you're playing a brand new game, and you're making your character creation there, we talked about this in the last video. Dragon Age, the fail guard is what I'm calling it. Um, would you choose to be these characters right here? If you could also choose to be these characters right here, you know the answer. I know the answer. When we're doing character creation in Madden, right? Madden football, when we're doing it in a sci fi, fantasy, whatever it is, the reason this is fantasy and fiction is it's got to be more human than human. It's got to be bit bigger, faster, stronger, more intelligent, more handsome. It has to be aspirational. It has to be, oh, that's something I would like to make myself into one day. There's a great guy here on YouTube. Uh, I forget his name. Jeff. I think it's Jeff Cavalier. If I have that wrong, I'm sorry. He is a uh, workout warrior and he saw Rocky Balboa, the Rocky movie when he was a little boy. And he's also Italian, this Jeff guy. And he has a physique like you wouldn't believe. And he got inspired by greatness. So when you lower the bar, now why do we lower the bar? This thing, by the way, it has come out that this thing may have cost them $400 million to indulge themselves with woke ideology. And we covered in the last video, what is going on? Why, why do they do this stuff? I'll make it real short for those of you that didn't see the last video. Check it out after this one. It's a culture of resentment. They have not achieved what beautiful, successful, smart, well-adjusted people have achieved. And instead of looking at greatness, instead of looking at this handsome devil here and the beautiful woman next to him, they look like this currently, and they don't understand they can get from this to this. But it's not about how they look physically. Oh, to me, it's, it's what they look like mentally. The ugliness isn't, it, you know, it isn't skin deep. It's to the bone. It's to the core of the soul. That's where the real ugliness lies. Some people are just not great looking. There's not much they can do about it. They can lose weight. They can get fit. But they just, they didn't win the genetic lottery. And that's okay. We love them. They're valid human beings. You know, not everyone can look like this, guys. Sorry, it's just great genes. But um, when they see this, they see because they're stuck here and they think this was stolen. It was handed to them by their parents. And they want to destroy it out of resentment. It's a very, very childish mindset. And that's why you get things like this. Now, I uh, some of these images, like this image and this image and this one, I made with the Grok AI. I just gave a uh, couple sentence prompt and it's amazing what it does. It's a huge shortcut for YouTubing and stuff like that. But I, I described this character, but I added words like beauty and fit and gorgeous face. And this is what it output for me. What would, what would have happened if the people who made these hideous characters had made them like this. What would have happened? I think the game would be selling well. I think it'd be a hit. From what I heard, people who played the game said the gameplay itself of Concord, this is through Sony and Firewalk Studios, I'm no expert on this, but they said the gameplay was fun. But the characters are so intentionally hideous with that resentment of, oh, I hate the blonde blue eyes. I hate him so much. I want to destroy him. The characters are so hideous that people don't want to play it. I reviewed The uh, Matrix. I do a Wednesday live stream in the middle of the day with my good friend Jericho Green. And we we're talking about the first thing that hooks you in The Matrix, the 1999 smash hit, is the aesthetic, the look. Everyone is handsome or pretty or cool or slick. The moves, the gun fu, it looks great. It's a visual medium. It's a movie. It's what I'm an expert in. I'm a comic book artist and comic books, they're movies. When you make a movie, you make a storyboard. Storyboards are just comic books. They're just a series of images that tell a story. So when you're making video games, you're making movies, you're making TV, it has a visual component that's pretty strong. There's no need to do this. You can just do this. And people will like it. Because they try and make it, oh, it's a racial thing. No, it's a she looks terrible, objectively, and it wouldn't matter what race she is. You can change that skin color to any color. She looks great. She does. This looks cool. So again, this stuff is aggressively done, it's intentionally done, and it's done out of spite. And I want to show you guys a little something more here. This guy right here, 
Now, he's handsome. He's not as good looking as me. But when I was seven years old, I was convinced I could be Han Solo. I even somehow from like that, uh, you know, like, didn't they have like tough skins at Sears or Garanimals or some, some of those clothing lines for little kids from Montgomery Wards or whatever. This is 1985. I was in Mr. Shouldener's first grade class. And my mom got me a pair of pants and they had like a yellow stripe down the leg. Now, if you've seen the original awesome Star Wars movies, you know that Han Solo has a stripe down his pant leg. And I would wear those pants. I was wearing them out. I would wear them every chance I got. Now, you look at this handsome visage of mine before you. But I am not a white man like Harrison Ford. I'm Mexican, Libyan, Turkish. I'm a I'm Mediterranean. You know, I guess there's some white Mediterranean. I guess there's probably some Italian. There's Spanish. There's Basque. But I'm not Ford. That's a British last name, right? I mean, he is white. He is white, white, white. But I didn't need to see myself in Star Wars because the humanity is what I saw. Han Solo was cool. He was stoic and manly. He didn't, he didn't break down and cry. He was a man. He had a sense of humor. He knew how to charm the ladies. He knew how to be brave in the face of death and danger. And his character arc in the first Star Wars is so great. He's all greedy. He takes his reward money and leaves. Then his conscience gets a hold of him and he comes back and helps Luke destroy the Death Star, right? So he was a great example of heroism, brotherhood, bravery, swag with ladies, turning from evil, like being a smuggler, right? And doing the right thing. This is great stuff. And these are standards. And those things he did are all challenges and hardships. It's hard to be a man. It's hard to be a woman. It's hard to be heroic, right? You don't want to do it. There was a line in Game of Thrones. The book's pretty good. The TV show, it's kind of dirty, the TV show. Um, but there was a line in there. One of the characters, a young child, I don't remember who, was talking to his dad. Bad guys were going to come and kill everybody. He said, Dad, aren't you scared? And the dad tells him, you can only be brave when you're scared. So when you think about being a man and emotionally regulating yourself, you can only do good when you have the opportunity to do evil or to do nothing, which is sometimes evil when you do nothing, right? So Han Solo was a great example of that. And I didn't need him to lower the standard to make me feel better. I didn't need him to be Mexican, Libyan. I didn't need him to be fat, you know, or anything like that. I didn't need any of this because I'm not a perpetual victim narcissist, you see? So what do we do about this stuff? Because like bitching and complaining, that's fine. This stuff should be mocked. It absolutely should be mocked and pointed out how awful it is. It really should. Because ultimately the people that perpetuate this, it's bad for them. It really is. You know, it really is. And we need to point out how bad it is with rhetoric and with humor, because when you do it with rhetoric, which is just a fancy word for persuasion, right? You're going to make the point and they're going to, whether they like it or not, they're going to feel your point. And eventually, if you close your wallets to them, they're going to change. Now, uh, that Forbes article I had right here, 400 million. And what, what did this thing? It lasted like 10 days online. <whistles> That's bad business. And that other one, that Star Wars Outlaws, where they butchered that beautiful girl's face. I don't have a picture of it handy. But uh, I think that beautiful girl who was the model, and then they made the, the horrible model of her. Um, that thing is uh, not doing well on the sales charts either. I saw Grums. I don't know if any of you follow him on Twitter. I follow him. He follows me back. It's always cool when someone big and cool like that follows you back. Because I'm big and cool, right? Maybe I'll follow some of you back. But um, yeah, how do we stop this? Because this right here, this is a picture I love to show people. And if you're wondering what this PowerPoint is, is I'm speaking uh, for a gun owners association on Friday. I believe that'll be Friday the 27th here in San Diego. And I'm talking about the culture war in my speech. This is part of the PowerPoint that I'm using. And I'm explaining to the voters that politics is downstream from culture. And as this entertainment goes, so will go your rights. Because people will watch this stuff. Like, why is this stuff so important, Gabe? Why are you getting all mad about the acolyte ruining this beautiful thing, right? Why, you, why do you care about vandals ruining your... That's my artwork there. Me and Carlos Downer did that. That beautiful Poison Ivy. And then the ugly-ass one from the Suicide Squad Killer Justice. Why do you care so much? Oh, I do have it here. Why do you care? Because when they make these narratives... Let me move forward in this PowerPoint and show you what I was getting at here. It's in here somewhere. You have to excuse me. Um, this right here, okay? When you start making art, the most persuasive form of persuasion, the most potent form of persuasion is storytelling. When you have excellent artists and writers, musicians, singers, dancers, reporters, when you have excellent artisans making excellent quality art, but it has awful messages, you convince people subconsciously these things are true about the universe. And they will eventually start to live that way, and they will vote that way. If you want your country destroyed, you want your rights taken away, you want people voting for the most terrible things, then feed them this filth. 
I'm telling you, politics is downstream from culture. That's why we have to win it back. That's why we have to win it back. How do we win it back? Well, you win it back like this. You do what I do. You make art. You can't just make art today. To become a professional illustrator, it's going to take you 10, 15, 20 years of study to be world class, to be a writer, to be all that. It's going to take multiple decades, probably. Some people get it faster. They have a little more talent naturally. If you don't have the time for that and you don't have the skills, then raise people up that way. Raise your children that way. And if you don't have kids and you don't have the skills, then buy it. Go to bigmancommerce.com and buy my comics. Buy them from other people making non woke stuff. Dean Kane, All American Lawman. If you love Indiana Jones and the um, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, if you love Romance in the Stone, if you love classic Star Wars, that's what this is right here. That's what it is. I'm making it. I walked away from a big old salary at Warner Brothers because I didn't want to help them make woke filth. Guys, we're going to win this. It's going to be awesome. Okay, what you see behind you, those are my books coming out in 2025. Tyrus, the Fox News guy, the pro wrestler, he's a friend of mine. We have an incredible Hulk-like book, Superheroes. Empyrean is my love letter to Star Wars made with some great friends. Dean Kane, All-American Lawman, Volume 2, The Hong Kong Connection. And of course, I've got like a Goonie-style book with a bunch of kids trying to solve a mystery of all the adults and coaches and teachers being replaced by like mindless, uh, you know, zombies. It's like a little, little Goonies, Invasion of Body Snatchers. And of course, nobody believes the kids, so they have to solve it on their own. It's kind of like Stranger Things vibe. Really fun. I am making non-woke art. And it's not overly political, like, oh, I'm a Republican and I hate Democrats. I don't do that. I just entertain you and I don't force ideology down your throat. Guys! Go to bigmancomics.com. Follow me on all socials. I am Big Man Comics on Twitter, X. And I am Gabe El Taib. You see how to spell it right down there on everything else. And we will see you every Tuesday, every Thursday, 8 a.m. Pacific. And Wednesdays, you have to tune in for the live stream where we review 80s action movies in double impact. It's improv comedy and an action movie review from my favorite 70s, 80s, 90s action movies with my great friend Jericho Green. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Make sure to follow us on social media and go to bigmancomics.com.